Check out what just showed up and I get to spend a whole week with it. Finally, the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. And this one is a manual. This is going to be such a fun week because we have a 668 horsepower supercharged V8, rear wheel drive, manual transmission. We've got a Cadillac CT5V Blackwing for a week. Let's see what the startup sequence looks like. Cadillac logo with the V logo, which fades into the Blackwing logo. And... <laughs> Supercharged 6.2 V8. First couple of miles in the black wig, the CT5 V black wig, heading to work. This car is a unhinged maniac. Holy crap. <laughs> crap it has so much power on tap long live the supercharged v8 although it's not living that much longer i think this is the last generation which is sad this thing is ridiculous i just did a full throttle pull <laughs> my biggest goal this week is not to go to jail this is so ridiculously fast this is gonna be my biggest test of self-control and restraint since I had the Shelby GT500, which makes 760 horsepower. This thing is hilarious. This and M5CS are probably the fastest sedans I've ever driven. This is gonna be an exciting week, sharing with you guys what it's like to live with a 5V Blackwing for the week. Holy crap. All right, we'll pick this back up after work today. I've been looking forward to leaving work all day because that means we're back in the Blackwing. Let's do a proper cold start because the car has been sitting here all day. <laughs> All right, that sounds proper. A supercharged 6.2 liter all-American V8. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why it sounds like a C7Z06 because it pretty much has the same engine. Just a baby throttle blip. Oh, we have the digital rear view mirror. Just like another GM vehicle, so you can flip that tab, goes from a mirror to the digital screen. The camera out back, love it because it eliminates glare, uh, dazzling lights at night. You do have to get used to it because you don't see a reflection of the headrest or yourself in it. But once you're used to it, I absolutely love the digital rear view mirror. With that, I'm gonna go drive the Blackwing. Quick trip to Costco to pick up a few things because I finally have a car with a usable trunk. This thing is so epic. Typical Costco, buy eight things, spend $350. Time to see how well the Blackwing consumes the recent Costco purchases. A little light down there, it looks like we kick that. Trunk opens. Well, that's convenient. It's a decent sized trunk. Should be able to easily fit everything in. That fit everything without a problem, but if you want true practicality, one of the hatchbacks like the RS7 or the wagon, the RS6 or E63 wagon, are probably the most practical. Oh, I just noticed this one doesn't have a carbon fiber rear wing, it's just body color. With that, time to head home from dinner. Always return your carts. Be a good person to return your shopping cart. Good morning. The fact that this one is a manual means no remote start, so we gotta get in, put the clutch in the old fashioned way, and start the black wing this morning. That's a good sound. The 5V Blackwing definitely sounds better than the CT4V Blackwing. Just listen to that angry V8 rumbling away. It sounds mean. Let's do a quick exterior walk around. The first thing I want to know, a change for the 23 model year, is we now have a Blackwing badge here on the deck lid underneath the V. Prior to that, there was no exterior indication really. There's no badging that showed this was a Blackwing. You just kind of had to know. But now we have the small little Blackwing badge here. We have the CT5 logo. This one does not have the carbon exterior, so we just have a painted smaller rear deck lid spoiler. The quad exhaust tips, that very bright blue paint. One other way to really tell the difference between the CT5 and the CT4 is the 5 has this little like kink here in the rear section. All the blacked out trim. We have those dark blue brake calipers. You can option carbon ceramic brakes on the 5V Blackwing. I do not think this one has it. These, oh wait, yeah, this is carbon ceramics. Holy crap. So no exterior carbon arrow, but this one has the $9,000 carbon ceramic brakes. With those blue calipers there with the V logo. Wow. We have a V badge here. Again, see no Blackwing badging, right? Just the V badge everywhere else. 
and for the five you have the blade Cadillac DRL thing that runs through the front bumper trim area whereas on the four this element design element is like all the way on the front so it doesn't get cut off I think this looks a bit more aggressive but you also can't get the front canards to hit the aero target the 4v blackwing has optional carbon fiber dive planes up front the five does not need it still looks pretty mean and aggressive all the blacked out trim this has a wider front track and wider front tires in the regular car which means they had to make this fender much more aggressive that's a functional vent here but this whole piece here just makes it look so much wider and angry it's a good looking car the mirrors are very small though they're like very short they're like very thin look at that it's not great for visibility it must have been an arrow thing and a design element thing the smaller the mirror the better probably but uh that's an interesting thing i noticed much more spacious and longer than the 4v there we go quick exterior walk around with that let's head off to work here's the window sticker so base price ninety thousand nine nine five for the manual equipped one there was an optional 10 speed automatic that costs a bit more i'd order it with a manual for sure so just under ninety one thousand dollars and then we add options so those carbon ceramic brakes are nine thousand dollars the interior leather in jet black with jet black accents is almost three thousand dollars pdr is sixteen hundred the parking package is seven hundred ten dollars which includes a hands-free deck lid release which is when you kick your foot on the bumper it pops up electric blue 625 19 inch aluminum wheels with the satin graphite dark finish that's 600 dollars front license plate bracket fit man screw that so total options 15,440 that's mainly because we have the carbon ceramic brakes if you add the carbon arrow it gets even more expensive you can add the carbon seats like it you can option these things up but even then it's still a deal compared to some of the german rivals so this one is option 107 830 which honestly is a is a bargain for this thing although budget for fuel 13 city 21 highway 15 combined it's thirsty i'm averaging 13.7 over the last 32 miles we'll see how that does over the whole week oh you get some backfires too i've been averaging 15 mpg which i would say is actually quite responsible in this car it is so new still under 1000 miles was delivered to me with 850 I want to show you the digital cluster and how we can change it. So as we scroll right, go through all sorts of different screens. So display theme, which changes the entire look. You can link to driver mode. It's currently locked into sport. This is what tour looks like. It goes to a much less aggressive kind of white and yellow scheme, whereas sport becomes white and red. And we'll pull up some driver info, some vehicle info and then track, this is my favorite on these new Vs. The tachometer goes horizontal across the top. Yeah, this is a cool one. So I'm gonna lock it in here. You can also link to driver mode, but we'll go with this. We have the V performance timer for zero to 60. There's a performance data recorder, the PDR, just like in the Corvettes. You can see how many Gs you're pulling. Launch control unavailable right now. <laughs> Trip computer. You can also select all sorts of different tiles, everything from battery voltage to the ELSD coupling, engine boost, instant fuel economy. It's pretty awesome. You know what's crazy? There's a Lamborghini Urus right in front of me and we make a lot more power with this thing than that. Pretty sure this would demolish the Urus in a race. Not that we would ever race, obviously, but I love this thing so much right now. Here's something really interesting I wanted to point out. The CT5V Blackwing comes on 19 inch wheels, 19 inch front and rear, and that is enough for these big carbon ceramic brake rotors. Compare this to something like the RS6 and RS7 from Audi. That thing comes on 21 inch and 22 inch wheels. Those are just too big. With 19s, it still looks really good in my opinion, and it just means it's, I mean, cheaper for tires, you get a little bit more sidewall. It's better. I'm very happy that the Blackwing comes on 19 inch wheels and I think it looks plenty good. It's on Soto Zeros right now, winter tires, because it's still a little bit cold. No snow at the moment. This thing is, <laughs> the CT4V Blackwing is pretty good in the snow. I've had that in snowstorms before. This one with all that power and torque might be a bit more of a handful. There we go, under the hood, this huge LT4 supercharged V8. 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque. We have this cross brace here with the V logo, handcrafted Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith built the 6.2 V8 in this monster. 
and also with the black wing so you get that supercharged 6.2 v8 this one's manual you can get a 10 speed auto and they're only rear wheel drive no all wheel drive version of the black wing this is a pretty cool opportunity to compare the ct5 v black wing with the regular ct5 v so they both have v badges but the black wing is a supercharged 62 v8 this is the twin turbo v6 shared with the ct4 v black wing and the first thing you'll notice is how much more aggressive the front fascia is compared to the regular v the regular v series is like the outgoing v sport like the mid-tier sporty trim and you can see how much wider the front end is so these fenders are completely unique and way more aggressive because of the wider front track the wider wheels and tires up front compared to the regular v and that i believe is a functional vent too so that's way more aggressive and then coming around to the back you see this does have quad exhaust tips too this does have all-wheel drive though so a bit better all year round inclement weather whereas again this is a tail happy rear wheel drive burnout monster good morning to a very snow covered cadillac black wing it's like super wet snow it's just like coming right off all right we're gonna clear the car off not entirely with my hands because that's cold and head out but first let's start it up so it warms up a bit <laughs> So right now with the snow and the cold is one time where the Blackwing may be at a slight disadvantage compared to its German rivals like the M5, the E63s, the Audi RS7 because it's fully rear wheel drive. Those have either all wheel drive or some sort of switchable all wheel drive to a rear wheel drive mode, whereas the Blackwing is fully rear wheel drive. So even with winter tires, it's a, it's a handful. It's fully rear wheel drive. It's so much power. In the dry, it sometimes struggles for traction. In the snow, even with the best tires in the world, it would still probably be pretty extreme. So that being said, I'm not sure how many Blackwing drivers are driving them in the snow. They probably have an SUV or a truck in addition. Ooh, if you have one of these, get an Escalade V. You'll like both. Escalade V is hysterical right it's like it's this thing in an suv form uh with that we've got the car cleared off we're gonna head into work and see how it does the road should be pretty clear just wet and cold uh so take it easy obviously no no shenanigans um uh, otherwise i'm driving a blackwing in the winter that's fun this is making an appearance again hi win many many people have mistaken this for the ct4 v blackwing because it's the same color i think you were like i, I said the same thing yeah. i was like oh Cool. This one, using cars. This one's a lot faster. This one's really fast and it's really loud. It's the weekend and we are going to do the full review of the Blackwing today, but it is ridiculously thirsty. So first things first, we need to go to Costco for gas. I need a coffee, probably wash it. We're gonna be getting some B-roll. Elia is gonna come and he's gotta experience this thing because he is super excited about the Blackwing. Why wouldn't you be? 668 horsepower, manual, luxury sedan. It's literally the best thing. <laughs> You know what's kind of crazy? The Escalade V, a big luxury SUV with a similar engine to the Blackwing is actually quite a bit louder in terms of the exhaust, the pops, all of that type of stuff. It's because it's a truck. Apparently trucks can be louder due to regulations. This as a car has more strict ones. This still sounds really good, but the Escalade is next level ridiculous on cold start, on acceleration, everything. So that's kind of weird to me because obviously this is even more sporty, but Apparently it's due to those regulations. All right, I have done 182.1 miles this week, averaging 14.9 MPG, which is not surprising. The Blackwing is thirsty, obviously. 52 miles of range remain. Both the fuel up and see how big the tank is and truly how thirsty and expensive it is to drive one of these, but who really cares, right? Like, it's worth it. 93 octane, 419. Let's go. So that only took 13.68 gallons. Means this thing is not that big of a fuel tank. So wild guess, this thing maybe only has like a 16 or 17 gallon fuel tank, which with that fuel economy is not enough. Let's see what the range is. Full tank, 279 miles of range. I wanna show you guys the rev match downshift feature for the Blackwing. So you see that big gear indicator? When it's white, it means rev match is off. So you gotta do it yourself, right? That's me blipping the throttle. But now we press the rev match button, it turns yellow. So we go up a couple gears and it automatically rev matches on downshift. So watch this. <laughs> and this thing also has no lift shift, which means 
when you're full throttle, you just put the clutch in, keep your foot planted, and it keeps going. Yeah, and it's still happy. <laughs> I love that rev match downshift. Can you do it yourself? Absolutely, heel toe, all of that type of stuff, but sometimes it's just fun to let the machine do it and have the computer make it absolutely perfect. This thing is so fast. That's cool, this is built in Michigan. Built in America. This is the most American of badass luxury sedans. We just got back from driving and filming the in-car part. Extalgic has arrived. Are you excited? I'm so stoked. This thing is a maniac. It is just ridiculous. We gotta get it washed so it's cleaned up so we can do our exterior filming. We'll probably do some rollers at some point too. Get video. And look at that. We've got winter tires, Soto Zeros. The dark blue brake calipers, the carbon ceramics. They match. Do you have the key? I do. Where's the key? So the key fob doesn't match the paint of the car, it matches the color that you spec for the brake rotor. So the previous 4V Blackwing I had had a red key because it had red brake rotor, so that matches there, you can get the bronze or whatever. The blue on blue works for me though, although you wanted to paint yeah, match. Yeah, I think that's kind of lame, I don't know. Why? <laughs> also look, they added a Blackwing badge now. Yeah, I see that. So now you know it's a Blackwing, not just a V, but yeah. All right, ready? Yes, it totally needs a carbon pack, yeah? Yeah, you get the carbon lip back, the wing back here, the front splitter. How much you love this thing? It's, it's really good. Isn't it just the best? It's, like, like, it's worth selling the 350R and the R8 for one of these for sure. <laughs> you make a valid point. I'm serious, That's I'm dead serious. Because it hmm. it would be a better daily driver than my rear wheel drive R8. It would have a manual transmission which solves the show. That's actually a really good point. Oh. My, my, that's my vote. That's his vote. All right. Imagine this next to the C8 Z06 in the same color. Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've done a proper tour of the interior. Also, the door handle's got this little, like, button there. A little electronic button release. All righty. So, V badge there. Again, there's not a ton of black wing badging on this car at all. There is on the seats. Like, how much more subtle do you get than that? A little black wing lettering thing on the side of the seats. So we have that 16 speaker AKG sound system, a nice like dark gray finish on the speaker grills. We've got carbon fiber inserts on the door, suede, some nice stitching. Nice touches, nice materials, but overall it just doesn't quite match the really high-end German stuff like uh, E63 or an Audi RS7. Have the red center stripe there. The steering wheel looks to be the same as on the CT4 Blackwing, carbon. Here's a little, this has to do with something, the numerical plaque with the type of model designation and like the sequence it's built in. I'm not sure how to decode that, so if you know what it is, comment below. This is the PTM toggle, that's the V button. Go ahead and start her up. Parking brake, electronic parking brake is here on the left. So you press that button to engage or disengage. Nice possible, drive with care, yes. That's an SD card for PDR. Heads up display controls, the V button, that quickly pulls that up. Yeah. So you can toggle through PTM modes. Observe. There we go. We've got the buttons here for climate control, heated seats, cooled seats. A lot of that is just pretty standard GM Cadillac stuff. Infotainment screen with wireless CarPlay, wireless phone charger. We do have a carbon fiber center console there. And the shift knob, that is a 3D printed metal insert. That's really cool. And the shift knob, like location, throw, all of that is just so perfect. The rev match button, traction, your mode switching, cup holders, center console, seats here. Have some nice quilting on them. Again, a V logo. Like imagine if that was the Blackwing logo. That would be so cool. Full suede headliner up there, which is nice. We'll check out the back seats real quick. So the front seat is exactly where I would be sitting. These are not the carbon ones. It's just suede here with the V logo, but good amount of legroom. Okay, headroom is not fantastic. It's better than the four, but my head is hitting the roof as I'm sitting here, but also I'm six foot three. It's usable, but don't mistake this for like an S-Class or something like that. So pretty basic back here. And that's a quick interior tour of the CT5V Blackwing. This has been an absolutely epic week with the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. I love this thing. That supercharged V8 is just monstrous. The power of the torque. The chassis is great. Magnetic ride is great. It has a fantastic manual transmission. It's so good. It checks all the boxes. Love the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it drives. This would be a just phenomenal daily drivable luxury performance sedan. 
I like it enough that I kind of want to buy one. <laughs> one of the big challenges, though, is the actual Cadillac CT4V Blackwing, because that's also really, really good. It's a bit smaller, lighter, a little more nimble, and dare I say, more usable power. It's also healthy at 472 horsepower versus the just insane 668 with rear-wheel drive. This thing is seriously a handful, much faster. There's also the price delta, right, between the 4V Blackwing and the 5V. There's probably 20, 30 grand between the two of them. Last of an era, Cadillac will be moving along with the GM brand into a lot of electric vehicles, hybridized. So we'll see what they do with this. Maybe a mid-cycle refresh with some new screens, tiny bit more power. This is one of those things that I think I would love to have in my garage, but it's been an absolutely phenomenal week. Make sure you check out the full review I did of the 5V Blackwing along with the videos on the 4V Blackwing. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Thanks for watching.